There's been a little confusion about how to create a brush that skips along and follows the direction of a path, like we worked on in class today, that represents stitching on our flats. So I would like to quickly go over this again so that you could have step-by-step -step instructions when you can do this on your own time. The first thing we need to do is we need to create our own brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my marquee tool and I'm going to drag out a long rectangle that sort of represents a stitch, one lone stitch. Fill that with black and then I'm going to use my marquee tool again and I'm going to put a selection around that, go to edit, define brush preset and call this my stitch ink brush and say OK. Then I can deselect and I can erase this line and now that brush will be the last brush in my palette. So if I open up the palette and go to the last brush, which is 570, and if you hover the uh, cursor over, it says stitching. So that's the brush we need. There it is. So now I need to do some things to it so that it actually works for what we want it to work for. So I'm going to go to Window and choose Brushes, and that will bring up a, a box that will have some um, controls that we can change some of the, the characteristics of this brush. As you see, it defaults in this stroke line here. So if we went to draw with it, it would make a big thick line like that. However, we don't want that. So the first thing we need to do is to click on brush tip shape, which it defaults to. So that's the first place we want to go if it didn't default to it for you. And I want to set the brush spacing. And what this will do is it will add some space in between every uh, the brush every time it moves across. So if you're painting with this or drawing with it, it's actually going to add a space. So it's starting to look like stitching. However, if we were to draw with this, every one of the stitches would be horizontal like that, even if we were going up and down. And that's not what we want, because it would look like, um, like so. And that's not very nice. So we're going to edit, undo the brush tool. So the next thing we need to do is we need to give it some sort of direction. So if you go to the next box down, which is Shape Dynamics, and click on it, there's two things you need to change. All of, the control, all of the sliders should be set at zero. Leave those alone. Those don't need anything. The first two controls, one, you want to create, um, make the pen pressure be off, and two, you want to click on direction so that the direction is chosen, and control three is just off. And notice when I've changed direction, suddenly my line is the line of stitching is sort of following along the line, the line of the path. So that's great. So now we're all set, except I don't want a row of stitching this big. I would like it to be rather smaller. So I'm going to go back to the brush tip shape, and I'm going to slide the diameter brush down. And you can see the stitches start to take a little bit of a shape. And I'm going to make it a little bigger for the, for the uh, sake of seeing this. And this is how big it'll be when it's done. So now when I grab my pen and I draw a path, any direction I want, even crossing over, and then stroke this path and do not simulate the pressure with the stitching and say OK and delete the path. Now suddenly we have a nice, even, spaced stitch line. Now bear in mind the length of the stitches in relationship to your flat. You want it to look realistic. You don't want it to look like Land of the Lost. So make sure that the stitching is realistic looking. Sometimes in Photoshop it looks very muddy until you save it as a JPEG and then print it out and suddenly it will look very clean. So I hope that has helped. Um, email me if you have any problems and I'll get back to you. Thank you.